This is the 1894 Marlin carbine. This one is chambered in 357 Magnum. This is a new release by Marlin. Marlin's been relaunched as a company. Marlin's been around since the 1800s, but they kind of went through a rough patch there. They were sold to Freedom Group. Their quality kind of went south. A lot of problems with the guns. Freedom Group went out of business. The rights to the Marlin brand were sold to Ruger, and Ruger is now starting to produce various Marlin firearms. We talked about the Marlin a lever action, the 4570, beautiful rifle, outstanding quality gun. And so this is the next one that they've released. They released a version of this earlier in 44 Special. And this one again is chambered in 357 Magnum uh, 38 Special. So we're gonna take a look at this rifle. We're gonna talk about the quality of it, kind of the history of the 1894, uh, its popularity, because it's a very popular lever action gun, even though it fell off during the Freedom Group years. But hopefully everything is rectified with Ruger's ownership and the quality has been restored. And that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. So let's get started taking a look at the new Ruger Marlin 1894 357 carbine. Have some 357 Federals loaded in here, some 158 grain slugs. We wanna thank our friends over at Federal for, for supplying the ammunition free of charge to the channel. And uh, yeah, let's give her a shot here. Ooh, who doesn't love a good lever action? I'm certainly glad to see this gun back on the market. Let's take a closer look. American Hartford Gold is dedicated to helping individuals and families invest in precious metals. This includes gold, silver, platinum, and both bars and coins. They provide both physical delivery to one's doorstep or inside of a retirement account like an IRA, 401k, or TSP. American Hartford Gold helps clients achieve greater security for their future by adding a safe haven asset to their portfolio. Investors receive only the highest quality gold and silver coins offered at competitive prices with 100% customer satisfaction guaranteed. American Heart for Gold has an excellent Trustpilot rating from over 1,000 customers. They're A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. They have a price match guarantee, a buyback commitment, and free maintenance and storage for up to three years. American Hartford Gold has a special offer for Military Arms Channel viewers of up to $5,000 in free silver on qualified orders. So please call 866-406-1988 today or text MILITARY to 65532. Again, that is 866 866- 406 1988 or text military to 65532. So please swing by and check out American Heart for Gold. I will put a link in the video description below. Marlin, what a great American company. Been around since the mid 1800s, around 1870. The company would get its start after the Civil War and they would go on to send, sell t tens of millions of firearms. Now, Marlin, like most companies, throughout the years has gone through some changes. They were sold to a company we know as Freedom Group and Freedom Group picked up a number of different popular brands back in the day. They would pick up AAC, Marlin, they would pick up Remington and people would pretty much universally agree that they destroyed every one of those brands through just shoddy craftsmanship. Uh, I, I don't know what you could attribute it to but the quality of the guns sank considerably. A lot of gun stores, ours included, wouldn't even carry Marlin products because the failure rate was so high that nobody wanted to deal with them. Nobody wanted to upset customers. And so their products started to, to fizzle out. People weren't buying them anymore. Now, when I was a younger man in the mid 1990s, I used an 1894 in cowboy action shooting. And I chose the rifle because I really always liked the looks of the 1894. And it's a slick gun. And one of the things that I learned about the Marlin, and this is no different, when you first get them out of the box, they're gonna be a little bit gritty, not bad. This is actually quite smooth compared to some of the older ones, or Freedom Group guns I've played with. But if you run the actions on them, you can get them to smooth out. So when I was big into cowboy action shooting, I took some, some paste that had a little bit of uh, like grit in it, if you will, and I'd put that paste on the bolt and stuff like that. And, and its purpose of the paste is to do that, is to smooth things out. And so I just sit there and run the action on the gun while watching TV for a couple of nights and that really smoothed the thing out. I mean, my goodness, the thing was buttery smooth. And so these guns, the more you use them, the smoother that lever gets. And you can really shoot these things fast if you watch some competitors out there. So the gun itself, let's talk about some of the features and the quality of the gun starting off on the buttstock. So back here we have American Walnut, just beautiful wood, nice hard wood, beautiful color, good grain to it, nice you know, texturing on the wood. Back here on the rubber butt pad, recoil butt pad, you'll notice that everything is nicely fit. When you run your hands over it, there's not a bunch of ledges. Same up here around the metal components where the wood meet the metal. It's interesting because I've toured factories that use wood stocks. 
and the amount of time it requires for humans to fit these to the wood, the wood to the metal components is, is ra rather time consuming. CNC machines will spit out a stock that's pretty close and then it's gonna take an actual human to actually fit it so when you run your hands over the wood and metal components, you don't feel ridges and you don't feel any ridges on this. The, the metal to wood fitment is, is outstanding. So that's something I really like to see. Same out here on the front. The lever itself, this is just a standard lever. You can get big loop levers, they're out there on the market, but um, you'll definitely want to play with the gun before you start switching out levers. Some people like the smaller lever like this, some people like the larger loops, but play with the gun before you start swapping out the lever. The gun has an exposed hammer, which is a normal design feature with a cross block safety. So if you have the hammer back and the safety on, even though the hammer will fall and it sounds like it should go bang, you'll see that hammer has not made contact with the firing pin. It's stopping short of it. When I take that safety off and pull the trigger, now you can see it goes all the way forward and actually contacts the firing pin. And you have nice serrations back there so you can cock it very easily. Um, I wouldn't put it down with the hammer on the firing pin. I would put the safety on and let the hammer down onto the safety. On top, we have screws that are plugging holes so you can put an optic up here. Some states like the state of Indiana, straight walled cartridges are all that's allowed on public lands. And so rifles like this make really good deer rifles. And you can put a scope on here. You can put a rail up on top and get whatever optic you want onto the gun. I've always liked the looks of the gun here. On the side, it's nice and smooth. I love how the ejection port is kind of concealed in the bolt itself. Here's your loading gate. The gun has a tube magazine underneath the barrel. And that tube magazine, because this is a 357 38, will hold nine 357s or 10 38 specials. We have the buckhorn sights back here. Uh, this is one of the things that I'm not 100% excited about is the blade itself is just a thick, hard plastic, but the rest of it's metal as it should be. It needs to kind of be a spring steel because your adjustments to elevation made with this little uh, step that you see here, you just push that through and it relies on the spring pressure of the, the sight pushing down against it to stay in place. And so you can adjust this for windage if you want to. You can tap this back and forth in that little dovetail. Up front here, we have a front sight that also is in a dovetail. So I've made adjustments to my front sight to get this perfectly zeroed. You can see it's drifted just a little bit to the right. And then we have a, a hood over the front sight that you can pop off if you don't want it there, but it's just there to protect that front sight to maintain zero. And then uh, out here on the end, we do not have a threaded barrel. This is more of a classic design. I'm sure they'll offer a tactical version like everybody else in the future. This does have the micro groove rifling. That's something Marlin's been doing for many years. And so the micro groove rifling, it gets kind of a bad rap. People say it doesn't work well with hard cast bullets. That's not true in my case. That's all I used to shoot my cowboy action gun was hard cast bullets and uh, lead. And they shot great, had outstanding accuracy. So I never had any problems with doing that. So you do have traditional sling swivels down here, you know, in case you want to use it as a deer rifle. Now the gun does have that safety on the hammer, but you also have a safety back here on uh, the, the actual lever itself. So if the lever is not completely closed, pulling the trigger, the gun won't fire. You have to push it all the way down into this little safety, gets depressed. The, the lever kind of wants to pop into place and stay there. And once it pops into place, now the gun can fire. So you just want to make sure you have that lever all the way down. If you're running the gun and you don't get a bang, chances are you just didn't close that lever all the way or your safety's on. All right, so that's pretty much it. You have like a, a little over 18 inch barrel on this thing. And the retail on these is gonna be a little bit salty. A lot of man hours, I would imagine, go into fitting the stocks and things like that. Nice blued steel. Uh, these things are gonna come to market at just over full MSRP of just over $1,200. I think it's like 1230 something. So you'll see those prices start to come down. Right now on the website, it says that these are in limited production. I anticipate that, that production num those production numbers will increase and that will cause the prices to come down. So if you wanna run out and buy one right now, chances are you're gonna pay pretty close to retail, full retail for them or MSRP. And then if you wait just a little while, once they hit the market, people get their fill, those prices will start to come down. So yeah, beautiful gun. I love the 357 38 Special. It's my preferred cartridge. I wasn't interested in the 44, which is why I didn't get one because 44 ammunition is just so ridiculously expensive. And so 357 38 is definitely more affordable, generally speaking, and it has a very nice light recoil impulse. So if you want to take a new shooter out, this would be an ideal gun to introduce somebody to the sports of shooting. All right, so let's do a little bit of shooting with the gun, have some fun with it because lever actions are a lot of fun.
I will say, folks, I'm a huge fan of bluing. It's kind of like a lost art. I'd be so depressed if they came out with a rifle like this and it was Cerakoted. It needs to be blued, and they did a beautiful job. Now, when you're cleaning blued finishes, you want to be a little bit careful. Uh, you don't want to use super harsh chemicals and stuff like that. I used to use Ed's Red, which was really popular in the 90s. You can make it yourself. And I actually damaged the bluing on one of my guns using that. So just stick to normal commercial products. You should be fine. Loading the gun up, first of all, you want to make sure, that, I'm going to make sure the gun's empty. There's nothing in the chamber. So to check the chamber, you can just uh, pull the lever down, close it. Now it will ease the gun, uh, hammer home, put it back on half cock. And now I can load rounds into the loading gate. So my little trick for doing this is take the tip of the bullet, push down. You'll see how it pushes that round in front of it down. Push that down, get the tip in. And then you just take the end of your thumb and push. And this is always going to shave some of your fingernail off and push that in like that until it pops and then the gate will close behind it. You want to make sure that gate closes behind it. So we can get up to nine rounds of 357 in there. Probably going to... Let's just go ahead and put the full nine in. Why not? As you get towards the gun being full, it gets a little bit more difficult getting the rounds in there. And that tenth round really wants to... Sorry, that was the tenth round, I think. Wasn't it? I don't know. There should be nine. It's going in rows of five. Oh, there it goes. Okay. It did. It's just being a little bit sticky. It, it really is close when you get to that, that last round. All right. And that is my ninth round. This would be my tenth. Okay. You got a little challenge target down there at 50 yards. And there's that safety. So... <laughs> So action on it's very smooth, very reliable. Just make sure you get that lever all the way down. Make sure your safety is not on. And uh, yeah, just fun. I just enjoy the heck out of shooting these old lever guns. Something just wholly American about them. So let's talk about the performance of the rifle just a little bit. I put my trusty trigger pull gauge on the gun and we got a measurement of right around four pounds, eight ounces for the trigger pull. So that's a decent trigger pull. That's about where I like them, right around five pounds. Now we had two different flavors of ammunition. We were out here shooting with the gun. We have some 130 grain, 38 specials, 158 grain, soft point, 357 magnums. Now, one of my latest and greatest fun, useful toys for what we do out here at the Military Arms Channel is the new Garmin Zero. This is the Zero C1. You'll see people on social media talking about it. I had to get one. The folks over at CS Tactical uh, hooked me up with a good price on this, and you can pick them up over there. You can kind of have a hard time finding them in stock anywhere, but this guy's has replaced our lab radar, infinitely more usable, very easy to set up, talks directly to your phone. And I mean, I used to think the lab radar was awesome. This thing is beyond awesome. It's small, lightweight, rechargeable, tuck it into a pocket or put it in your gun bag. Uh, the lab radar is much bigger. So definitely check one of those out if you wanna get good readings on muzzle velocity for your shooting. All right, so the two different flavors of ammo, uh, the 130 grain, Federal, we had an average velocity of 1,096 feet per second with that 130 grain projectile. And then over here, with the 158 grain 357 Magnum Federal loads, we were getting 1,803 feet per second on average. So that's going to give you quite a bit of power. And one thing I noticed about this was that my 300 blackout is like on the low end of 357 Magnum power out of a stumpy little barrel of only 6.75 inches, and, but it has that much higher ballistic coefficient. Nobody would argue that 357 Magnum isn't a good deer cartridge. I wouldn't argue it's not. Uh, I've shot deer with it. It's a very effective cartridge. And so, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a straight walled cartridge lever action, you just want a good lever action. I know there's a bunch of imports out there you can consider, and, and a lot of them are really nice guns. I've seen some really nice import lever actions, but if you want a good American-made gun, you cannot beat the 18, 1894 Marlins. You just can't. Absolutely one of my favorites. Uh, I would say I'm probably more drawn to these than I am the original uh, Winchester designs, which are iconic in their own right. Uh, but it can be very hard to get those, and even the replicas of those are going to be more expensive than this. So it's something to consider if you're out there looking for a lever gun. Uh, I would, could not uh, 
say enough nice things about the new Marlin rifles. I've really enjoyed them. This is the second one I've had uh, plenty of range time with. That I, I just got to say, Ruger, thank you for bringing these back and doing a great job in getting them onto the U.S. market and upping that quality game again, giving us the rifle that we expect from Marlin. All right, guys, if you have any questions, ask those questions down below. I do try to stick around for the first couple of days after a video goes live to answer any questions you may have. Also, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become part of our Patreon family. Again, there's a little link in the video description below. Right underneath the video player you're watching right now, you got the little Join and Thanks button. Mash either one of those buttons and you can support us right here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. Thank you for 15 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon. Oh yeah, swing by, check out Copper Custom. All right, talk to you soon.